thank you everyone and thank you Viva Ness for giving me this chance to speak to everyone. Um, I, would, I will take the next 15, 20 minutes um, kind of to share with everyone my experience and let us get started. Elizabeth, can we go to the first slide please? So, um, so when I was invited to, to speak, I, you know, like I put myself um, back in kind of this researcher mindset because we have, uh, the question is, um, how can we benefit from having this entrepreneurship mindset? So, you know, like uh, I would like to start it off with um, a researcher mindset and because we researcher, we are researcher, so we research, right? So the, the way we think about research is we go spend a lot of time on this so-called official journals. You know, you go search Science Direct, ACS, uh, different type of uh, materials, all this peer review journal because anything outside of this realm, we uh, consider them not to be reliable. Next slide, please. And so um, being researcher also that we are um, wanting to know what is the fundamental principle that drive a certain system, a certain principle. So we ended up uh, spending a lot of time uh, thinking and thinking and thinking and make sure that everything is standing up for scientific test. Okay, next please. So at least this is not universal and a lot of you may be already be aware of a lot of this, but this is how I often approach research. First, I think about what's grant is available, what's research funding, how it fits into my interest, and then I write the proposal to obtain the funding. Once we got fundings, when we try to recruit graduate students and then to do that research, and the goal is that we want to publish our finding in peer-reviewed journals or a prestigious journal. So in order to qualify for this, um, you uh, wanted to have the highest scientific principle. You want to recruit the best graduate students that is willing to work in the lab day and night. And um, you do um, execute research the best you can. Um, that makes sure that it stands up for all sorts of scientific principle. So because the goal is of peer reviewed journals. So could we have the next slide please? So because we are um, publishing this type of journals, and this is only an example, this is my latest work, because the goal is often publication. Um, we, like I mentioned, we spend so much time making sure that the study is thorough, it will stand up, um, that it will make scientific contribution, and that it stands up for to scientific tests because it has to go through many different reviews. Some it's two, some you go through like five reviews, whatnot. Now, in, on top of that, because the only way we communicate to our audience is through readers, therefore we tend to want to go into all the details. Look at an, a research article, it's often at least six pages long, so you want to go into all the details, um, thinking that if anybody wants to repeat your um, experiment, they should be able to reproduce it. So it kind of like you get into this mindset of uh, very thorough, uh, detail oriented, um, and then you kind of lost touch with how you talk like a normal person. Now, so next slide, please. So you're started to think, wait a minute. Um, if this is my goal, I want to publish, I want to graduate students who work in the lab 24 hours, willing to work as hard as they want. So I'm asking myself, what is missing from this, right? First of all, how many people you started to think, wait, how many people are reading your work? How many people are using your work? And how does your work can impact wider audience? at least more than a scientific com community. I know a lot of you who've come here 
thinking about um, startups or, or taking your business, um, taking your research idea into become a business, you already know your work is making an impact. A lot of you have been publishing for many years. So it's definitely making an impact to a scientific community. But how do you know if it's making an impact to a wider audience outside of the scientific community? So you started to uh, look outside. So not only publish your work, you may start attending conferences. And we do that to keep up with um, advances in science and technology. But still, conferences that often we go to, it's still limited to scientific audience. So some of you may start expanding into, you know, talking, going to trade shows, a little bit more expanded, but within the field. So, um, and this opportunities uh, come to me, the last point is, if you want to reach a wider audience, maybe you may start going to an event where non-researchers are not the majorities. You probably, when I make this suggestion, you probably think, oh my God, this is, um, who's gonna understand me? I publish, you know, in the Q1 journals or Q2 journals. These are very specific, very advanced. So I think it's um, kind of, it helps you reorient yourself a little bit. How do you get to talk to people who are non-researcher that they understand what you are doing? And maybe they have um, somewhat of a good suggestion. And that's how I learned. So next slide, please. So I learned by, I'm, and it's um, by accident, purely by accident. I actually, I was helping Elizabeth and Dr. Tokue kind of uh, communicate this idea of tech planter, what they are trying to do to my students. I actually, being a researcher, I never thought about joining. I, not, I did not even think about startups, you know, like these entrepreneurships and all that stuff. I thought, you know, like it's for young kids, students have so much energy. So I was helping them. I was helping them to set up a meeting. So, um, and I was listening to them talking. I, I lo listened uh, through Dr. Tokui's eight, three examples. I thought, you know, like, and then I started thinking, hey, maybe I can do this also. So um, that's how I joined Serendipity, uh, Serendipitous, but I, I thought it gave me a very, very good learning experience. So I like to share with you a few points that I learned from joining Tech Planter. Next slide, please. So the first point that I made is about um, that when you join an event where non-researchers um, go, so you need to try to communicate to them at, at their um, kind of um, meet each other halfway. And when you know, thinking about this uh, startup um, competition you probably have heard of this so-called elevator pitch in reality we probably not going to be in the room with um in an elevator with uh, elizabeth or dr Tokri or our funder but it's kind of an analogy that if you talk to somebody when you just being in the elevator ride for 10 minutes, can you actually communicate what you are doing to them? And I know a lot of you said, I, it's so complicated, I can't do it in 10 minutes. In reality, to me, it's probably not just 10 minute talk, but it's the process that you have to prepare for that elevator pitch you started to have to rethink about your research. And we are so used to think of our research in, in terms of what do we do, what experiment, how do we evaluate this research? But when you have to pitch your idea to some people who have non-scientific background, they don't think about what experiments you have to do. They think about what the results, what is your product, who's your customer. If you were to start a business, what is your model? So you can kind of start rethinking your process in a different terms. And as you're doing that, you um, started to identify what is your, the strength 
of your technology or what's the strength of your work and what your weakness is. And even if you don't start a company from your scientific knowledge or you don't start a company from your technology, at least identify that will help you to go forward by just addressing your weakness or enhance your strength. Next slide, please. The second one, um, it's this process of um, develop your elevator pitch. It can help you reevaluate your research. And I'm putting this uh, case study, um, this is the project that I put together for Tech Planter last year. So, you know, the, um, my, uh, the technology, uh, I was looking at a background. So uh, the case study is antibiotic market and I was looking at vancomycin. So here, the antibiotic market of um, global antibiotic market in 2017 is about 42 billion and it's broken up into different regions. So we're looking into Asian, African, Australian emerging market. We see that there is a good potential and I have a platform that can produce this antibiotic vancomycin from a very inexpensive source. It's a crude glycerol. This crude glycerol is derived from biodiesel production. And as you know, in Thailand, we have um, government it's subsidizing biodiesel production. Therefore, we have a lot of this byproduct. And we have a technology that we use the bacteria to eat this glycerol and then it ferments only five to seven days to make this vancomycin so i'm telling you this it sounds very good right very cheap product starting and then you have bacteria the condition is very mild we ferment it from five to seven days anybody who can make beer from oh anybody who can have a beer fermenter can make this and the product and the potential market is 70 to uh, 42 billion so it sounds like a great plan right that's why i enter tech planter i thought you know come out of this i'm gonna be a billionaire and i'm gonna make so much money but there's so uh, can we stay on please but there are a lot of things that go on um i've never thought about who's uh, when I have the mancomycin from this fermenter, how am I going to achieve it to get to the product? As we go through this elevator pitch, thinking about business model, we see a lot of issue with this. And that's why we haven't seen anybody who makes vancomycin from clute glycerols. But in any case, um, I learned my good lesson that just having good technology, cheap technology, doesn't mean that you can have a final product. So at least uh, to me, I think I've learned my lesson. That's a good starting point. So in the next step, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to think about this. And the last thing is that um, uh, what I learned about joining um, Tech Planter and also um, just being exposed to this environment, entrepreneurial environment, I get to build a network of collaborator. And you are a researcher, you probably think, no, 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 I have a network of collaborator already. For example, uh, academic institution, research institution, these are traditional research collaborator that everybody may have worked with already. But in an event like Tech Planter or having um, connection with Leave a Nest, that opens opportunity for me to think about, you know, uh, connecting with businesses, connecting with end user. Sometimes the end user is not the customers themselves. For example, if I want to make consumer, um, if I want to make vancomycin, actually my end user may be. Uh, a large pharmaceutical companies that they know how to prod to market the pharmaceutical products for me. Another uh, good collaborator that I found is a funding source, and that is not. I know a lot of you get funding from businesses, and you say, "Oh, you have funding already," but sometimes with the right business, not only that they give you funding sources they become a partnership. 
So uh, with the tech planter, I was exposed to a uh, Missui chemical. So they're not only interested in our technology, they want to partner with us and thinking about developing different uh, products. And they have made good recommendations. So for me, um, I know that the businesses are really interested in this product. So my research is not going to go to waste. It's going to get picked up by somebody for sure because they already told me that they are interested in doing this. So to me, these are very, very uh, valuable lessons. And I think um, it opened up my eyes in from to, to kind of looking at research in very different perspectives and to kind of thinking what, um, you know, like earlier when I'm a researcher, I feel like, okay, I know my stuff. I'm going to work in the lab. I'm going to perfect this. But now I started to learn that uh, to perfect your research, sometimes it helps a lot by bringing in other collaborators. Um, I'll give you another example. So I was working with a diff um, another group of research. We were planning to do a TB detection. So we did a lot of brainstorming. Um, I did a lot of molecular biology studies, uh, biochemistry studies, and with serious um, bi brainstorming. I have no idea what I said even. So um, yesterday, she called one of the my collaborators. She calls me and she was like, "I think your idea can be used to um, help with this COVID detection." I was like, "What?" And she's like, "You mentioned this idea. I think it could work." So then we started calling different people that we've discussed this TB detection technique with. I think we actually may come up with a very good idea that can be applicable to COVID. Uh, detection. So I think you, I, the lesson I've, I've learned even more is that by talking to other people, um, you've um, actually accelerate your research by a lot. So that's why network of collaborator and knowing a lot of people can really help accelerate your work. Okay, that's all I have. Um, on um, what I've learned. If you have questions, please feel free to uh, type it in and leave it with Elizabeth and we'll address it at the end. Yep. So thank you very much, Dr. Wanwipa, for the uh, presentation. I uh, hope the participants actually learn uh, something from here. So right now we are going to go back to talking about Tech Planter Thailand program. Um, this is to actually give you some idea of how we actually support the participants. So, all right, so uh, I hope you can see the uh, presentation slides. So, Tech Planter program itself, it is one of the solutions that you can actually uh, benefit from that uh, Libanese provide. So Tech Planter is a seed acceleration program for researchers and early startups. So we started this Thailand round since 2016 and this year is actually the fifth year running. So as we have been working with um, deep tech researchers and startups for many years, when tech, the tech startups first started, we actually realized that there were some difficulties that the researchers and startups face. So uh, it has been highlighted for, um, by Tokue-san just now. Uh, seed funding, business partner um, sourcing, as well as the prototyping manufacturing site. So because of all these issues that the researchers and uh, startups have, we started the Tech Planter program so that they can actually um, benefit from our network. So uh, through the Tech Planter program, we also want to um, support them in uh, maturing their technologies further. Okay, so the PDCA cycle, uh, I'm just touching it so that uh, we can actually understand more about how researchers and startups work. So the PDCA cycle is 
one of the processes that businesses, um, especially the large corporations, they use to ensure rigor and effectiveness of operations. So because the PDCA cycle has actually shown effectiveness and rigor, it is also difficult for businesses to move away from their usual way of working and to actually adopt um, new ideas and thought processes. So um, with a lot of changes in today's world, the society faces new issues that need to be solved um, with new innovations urgently. And we see that the researchers and technology startups, they are actually coming up with all these new ideas and new innovations to solve these issues fast. And yet, without the funding, business partners, etc., they will not be able to actually <clears throat> make a positive impact on the world. So that's why we would like to support the researchers and startups in researching the unknown as well as creating something from scratch. Okay, so, so in this part, uh, how we do it is actually through the, Q, the QPMI cycle that uh, we actually instill in the Tech Planter program and also um, when we try to mentor any uh, startups or researchers or even students. So uh, the QPMI is actually question, passion, mission, uh, slash members and innovation. So uh, question is actually social issues which uh, the researchers or startups want to solve and uh, the passion or determination towards solving this issue. So putting into a project mission and gathering participants for this, they will be able to actually innovate in the future. So uh, if let's say the researcher or the startup succeeds, they uh, develop a new concept and actually contribute novel values to the world. And if they don't, they repeat the QBMI cycle whether to tweak the parts of the QPMI cycle or embark on a new question, which is embark on a new social issue that they want to solve. So uh, QPMI cycle, I would say that it's something that you have always been using, just that uh, not everyone has been verbally uh, sounding it out. That's why it sounds new, but it's actually something that is instilled in you already as a researcher in a in a uh, technology startup uh, founder. Okay, so, <clears throat> so taking Dr. One We Pass project, right, we can actually put it into the QPMI framework. So the question of how to make valued products from waste was a uh, Dr. One We Pass question for her vancomycin project. And the passion was from the fact that vancomycin is considered the last line of defense for use when bacterial resistance is high. And also vancomycin is very expensive in the market for use. Okay, so uh, mission is to make vancomycin manufacturing process more effective and also drive the cost down. So lastly, we also have the innovation of a new method to produce vancomycin more effectively whereby maybe Dr. Wang Weipa was thinking she might be a billionaire <laughs> in the future. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay, so back to this. I hope that uh, this will actually give you a better idea of what QPMI framework is about. All right. Um, in the tech planter uh, system, we are actually establishing a deep tech ecosystem in the various countries that we are operating in. So uh, it involves gathering the deep tech researchers and entrepreneurs who will change the world, uh, the private sectors of, uh, and government bodies, as well as the maker communities and super factories. So um, Libanese, how we come in is that we connect these stakeholders with one another for technology to be pushed out into the society. So these uh, stakeholders have to come together so that uh, the technologies will be uh, will be impacting the society further, not just in the lab or to a targeted 
uh, small community that you are trying to use the product on. Okay, so um, about Tech Planter, the unique characteristics of this program is that we focus on supporting deep tech based technologies, which means any research or innovation that requires research and development. So it can be any research project that you have in biotech, uh, agri-tech, meditech, engineering, and uh, many more other uh, research fields. Okay, so uh, we accept teams from any stage. And so if you only have an idea, it is also possible as well to apply and also uh, be able to be mentored by us. Okay, uh, the application is free of charge for all uh, participants. And one thing that we look for is actually your drive and your passion towards the project. So um, that is one thing that uh, a lot of VCs look at as well. We invest in people and not invest in the technology. So uh, the good thing about this program as well is that um, at a very early stage, this allows you to build trusting relationships from the beginning with the people that you'll meet at uh, the events that we hold. Okay. Um, so the merits for joining this is that you have the opportunity to pitch your ideas to top management of MNCs, multinational corporations, uh, prototyping opportunities with the Japan Super Factories as well. Um, these are actually small medium enterprises in Japan who are experts in certain materials. Okay, and um, you also have access to the network of Limanes globally. So through us, you can actually uh, connect to more researchers as well as any funding opportunities that you will have. So uh, for Tech Planter last year, we had 20 applicants and of which nine finalists and five lightning talk speakers spoke in the event. Okay, so some of our participants in the biotech field uh, joined the T-cells program, a uh, biotech program last year as well, concurrently. And uh, they were actually awarded the grant from T cells to continue their research and trials. So uh, on the left, you have Panakura, and uh, this, this team actually aims to redefine treatments for Thai people, and they needed funding support for clinical trials and establishment of the platform to collect Thai people's DNA. And on the right, you, uh, we have PetStem, on the other hand, who was actually in the face of clinical trials to heal the pet's uh, illnesses through stem cells. So at this moment, they are actually performing the process in the hospital on a pet dog who has been diagnosed with cancer. So we hope that the pet dog will be healthy again. Okay, so for the past two years as well, we have been we have gathered the Tech Planter alumni and also other startups at the Tech Venture Meetup Thailand event. So uh, this event actually allows uh, the startups and alumni to explore collaboration with local and international corporate partners, venture capitals, angel investors, manufacturers, and other potential partners for them to accelerate their business further. So it's also um, a place whereby startups, founders, as well as uh, researchers, they will actually uh, be speaking to one another and also maybe they end up collaborating with one another. Yeah. So this year, Tech Planter Thailand is scheduled to be held on a Saturday on 11th of June at Chetram Residence Saturn Bangkok. So at this moment, it will still be a physical event. And if the COVID-19 situation uh, is not uh, well controlled enough, we will move it to an online event instead. So regardless, the event will still continue. And for those who are interested in the program, the application deadline is actually uh, 
5th of June now. So it's not 22nd of May anymore. It's uh, 5th of June. So about uh, five weeks from now. Okay. Um, so here's the process from, from now on. We will be closing the application date on 5th of June, take note. And we will be interviewing all the applicants and have internal screenings after. So by 26th of June, we will be announcing the, the finalists and the lightning talk speakers uh, for their attendance. And also uh, we will be going through the mentoring sessions until 11th of July, where the participants will be pitching at the event. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the grand, grand prize for this year's Tech Planter round will be 3,000 Singapore dollars, two written tickets and accommodation to participate in the regional final round in Singapore in November this year. Okay, so uh, following that, the grand winner of the Singapore round again will, will receive 3,000 SGD, two return tickets and accommodation to participate at the Hyper Interdisciplinary, Con Interdisciplinary Conference in Japan next year. So in this conference, uh, researchers, startups, as well as Japanese uh, business personnel will gather and uh, it will be a two to three day event uh, to actually uh, share about the new research, new findings, as well as new innovations that have been coming up in Japan, as well as in Southeast Asia. Okay, so uh, the second award that we have for this event Tech Planter Thailand round will be the Levenes Award, whereby the recipient team will also receive the same prize to participate in the regional final round in Singapore in November this year. Um, there will also be other attractive prizes by our Thai and international partners. So uh, we will be updating this uh, in on a later date. And you will definitely have opportunities to work with Japanese conglomerates as well as super factories. So uh, one thing to note is that our support doesn't stop here and it doesn't stop after the program. In fact, at any point in time, uh, alumni in our network who have faced any issues will usually just contact us and request for support. So uh, it really depends on what, uh, at what stage you are at and uh, we can also uh, customize the support according to your needs. Okay, so uh, that's one thing to note. Uh, okay, so this is the website to register, uh, en.techplanter.com forward slash entry for, and for more information, you can actually go onto the website below as well. Uh, so this is all about Tech Planter program. So if you have any questions about any part of our session, uh, do type your questions on the chat function and we will answer them. Also, uh, if you would like to have your answer, uh, your questions uh, directly asked, uh, do click on the raise hand function so that we can actually unmute you for you to speak. All right, so thank you very much. Elizabeth, I think you already got one question from uh, Kunlistadzak. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wan Weeper, for your presentation. Listening to your talk today is different from you pitching on demo day, which is good for opening up our mind. My questions for the moment is some researchers I know like to stay in the comfort zone. They develop the very interesting product, but they prefer to only transfer the technology or selling the IP. Do you have any idea to encourage those researchers to participate the activity like uh, Tech Planter and then Startup Pitch? Okay. Okay, um, I, that's actually a very, very good question. And I, I go through that myself also. Um, initially, like I said, um, I kind of 
serendipitously sign on to this because I was listening and I and as I go through it, I I actually I I do have every time every time um um we have a mentoring session, I feel like oh um I should pull out, maybe I should stop, and it's difficult. So and and I I do I do agree with you, but then again from um a point of view of somebody who wants to fund you or um, buy you a license if you don't feel like you're committed enough to your technology do you think from the other side of the coin like if they don't see that you are really committing i i think and the 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 your partner business partner your scientific partner will see through that also i i I don't know if that answer your question. So I, I know I have hesitation also, but you just have to kind of get out of your comfort zone. And that's why it's great to have a group of support, your partner, um, leave a nest, or somebody you talk to that kind of um, rationalize it through the whole process. But I have to admit every time, every time like um, we have mentoring session, we have about three to four sessions. I feel like, oh, maybe I should just give up every time. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks a lot for, for allowing me to attend this uh, 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 webinar. Yeah, so I, th thanks for Dr. Van Vipa again for the questions, uh, for the answer, actually. Um, since I, since I uh, participated with Leafness last year, I came back to the university, so people t asked me about uh, participating with Leave a Nest, and so I I I explain them how can they participate even they only have the idea, but some question is that they they are not keen enough to present their work, so they they like to work in the lab. They produce a prototype, but once they have to get out on the stage or to present their work, they don't have confidence. So my question is that. If I would like to help these people to enter the training program with Leafness, would it be possible for me to be a kind of a part of their group? Even though my team last year was pet STEM, this year will be another product. Will Leafness allow me to, for example, just, just the idea, to pitch for them in, I mean, instead of their team? Okay. Even though, so, of course, I know their technology. Yes. Uh, okay. So for this, Yes, we do allow, and uh, we actually do not limit uh, our participants. And so our past participants can always come back to join us again. Okay, so even if let's say it's uh, today you want to participate as pet stem again, and you have uh, uh, something that has been advanced, you can also do it. Yeah, so it doesn't need to be a different project but if it is the same project as uh, previously then we will hope to see some uh, advancement in your research if i can add a bit more so um yes if you think it's going to um encourage them to join in uh, having you as a speaker is one way uh, hopefully throughout the journey, maybe the researcher themselves will be comfortable enough or maybe even just a little bit to join in, uh, I think would be an ideal case. However, let's say even after, you know, we try to encourage them, uh, they, they feel a bit uncomfortable being there. I think as long as you do understand the technology and you are actually part of the team, I think we will be uh, more than happy to have you join in again uh, and presenting uh, together or maybe in place of uh, students or some other researchers who, who has the technology. Hi, uh, Ms. Nguyen. Yeah, uh, Hi. hello everyone. Hello. Uh, yeah, my name is Bing and uh, I'm currently a researcher at Vietnam National University. And I have uh, finished my master's degree in Thailand and I uh, participated in uh, some courses from Dr. Wang Gripa and I was uh, really admire her and uh, she helped me a lot. And uh, 
And uh, thank you for all the presentations and uh, I really appreciate um, as a new researcher and I am just like a early startup and uh, I work in the um, in Vietnam National University, but I just like, uh, since I, I came back to my country, I found out that that uh, my university and my, my um, country still lack a lot of technology to, to proceed with. And sometimes when I have the, the idea or or something, or they have the fund, but the fund here is, is quite, quite less. And um, uh, to, to, to come with the, the fund is, is the, you know, it's, it's require a lot of time and the idea and the, uh, to write a proposal to, to, to ask for the fund. But um, um, somehow it's, it's, uh, I feel it's really hard to be uh, accepted. And I was wondering if I, I want to really uh, proceed with this idea and whether there is a technology that I can, can, can work with. And it's, it's really hard for this situation. And, uh, sometimes I was thinking about giving up to doing research, but uh, I really like doing research that, um, uh, for this point. So I hope that uh, uh, Dr. Wang Hipa, Dr. Elizabeth, and, uh, and doctors can help me to, to, to uh, solve this problem because I have started to, as a researcher for uh, eight months and uh, I found like, a lot of trouble. Uh are you trying to look for a way how Libanese may be able to have researcher like you in Vietnam? Is that yeah. what was that your question? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with our institution. Okay. Um, in 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 for such case, maybe we might need to have a separate meeting uh, so that we can also further understand uh, what is the the real issue and then if it's something that we may really can work on. Um, of course, from how, how we feel, we definitely would like to explore a way to do so. Um, however, at the moment, Livanes also is still a very small company who uh, doesn't have lots of funding yet. Therefore, we need to find out if there is any corporate or any government who may be able to uh, work together with us, together with the university, Therefore, we can um, um, energize the ecosystem. So um, if you would like to maybe send an email to Elizabeth uh, after this uh, meeting so that we can set up a separate meeting to actually discuss to, for, for us to learn a little bit more about yeah. the situation. Yeah. And um, maybe one way, because we also have our event in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, Vietnam, uh, therefore, if you would like to join the Vietnam round, uh, that way we can also try to um, show to other people how some of the researchers may be able to attract some uh, interest from uh, Japanese corporates or from uh, Libanese as well. Uh, maybe that could be the first step we can do together and hopefully we can uh, meet face to face and uh, discuss further about what we may be able to do. I think yep. that would be... Oh, I can say at this moment. Sorry, I cannot say, you know, definitely we can do uh, start something right now, but um, let's take it step at a time and then we'll definitely would like to look into it together with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vern. Uh, we have another question from Dr. Ryan. Can we apply research grant in Libanese and how is the process? So, uh, Ryan, thank you for questions. And uh, currently, I'm afraid there is no um, research grant that is on call at the moment. However, we will be uh, exploring the possibility of if there's any uh, corporates who would like to set up a grant together with us. So once that comes out, we will definitely uh, share with you. Um, Every year, if it's related to biotechnology or uh, food-related technology, we tend to get Ajinomoto grant, which comes out every year. And then for this one, they are calling out for anybody in the world to apply. So if you have technology that can be applied in that area, um, I think it usually comes out mm, around April, May. So it could be this month or next month that we may have some uh, calling for. If you're looking for more of an engineering one, maybe you can give us some idea of what kind of uh, funding is needed. 
and then we can use that as a hint to look for any other um, uh, research grant that we may be able to go after. We would be very excited to have any of the applicants come in. Uh, this year, we are having less reaction, more so than last year, which means there's quite a lot of um, chances for anybody who comes in to grab the prize and then also to uh, get some um, attention from our partners. Because we do already have a partners in our, uh, in our pocket, in a way. So they have already agreed that they will be our partner for this year. So Mitsui Chemicals, the same one from last year. Uh, Guliko is coming back as well. So um, there are other companies who is looking in as we speak. And some of it is an engineering company and the others in the food packaging. So um, any area, they are very much interested to find out what's happening in Thailand as well as, you know, what kind of issues that we as a, Earth citizen can actually um, solve together. So I hope you will take the action. If you know anybody, we appreciate your reference to your uh, colleagues or any of the startups who might be looking for. Any stage is okay. Uh, any idea is okay, as long as it's a um, possible impact to the society. So that's what we are looking for. We are looking for deep technology and uh, deep issue solving startups. So hopefully you will join us. Join us. And then if you have any questions, you can always uh, write to Elizabeth and then try to ask for support in maybe filling up the application, also trying to figure out how we can uh, proceed. So thank you very much for joining us. And then I'll give it back to Elizabeth. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Tokui. So, uh... Just a last thing that uh, we hope to have your feedback on the session today and also how we can improve in the future. So if you would be able to use about two minutes to scan and also uh, fill in the uh, form, we would be more than happy to receive them.